Welcome to the Known Victory Church YouTube channel. We are so glad that you found us today. We exist to make Jesus known and to be a place that anyone can call home. If you haven't yet, make sure to subscribe, like, and share these messages so we can truly make Jesus known in our homes, cities, and across the world. We pray that this message impacts you and helps you to grow closer to Jesus. I don't know if it's just mostly men, but there's something about men and that we just like to be really strong and we want people to know how strong we are, right? You know what I'm talking about? And you see this from like little kids that are like running up to their parents and like flexing for their parents. But then you also see grown men flexing in mirrors to show off to their friends. The thing is, it's funny, I heard this so many times that a lot of guys go to the gym to impress girls, but all they end up doing is impressing their friends. Um, the girls never show up, right? But we love to be strong. We see this so much in culture where we want to be known as strong. And when we look at Samson, it was the series we've been going through. We look at Samson, he was incredibly strong. We see him as strong. And last week I showed you a picture of what I thought he looked like, but he may have also looked something like this. There he is. Just a little, that's like post haircut in between the pillars, Samson, right? He's got his eyes in this image here, but you know, Samson was known for this incredibly strong man. He was known for being strong. And the question that we have to ask is what made Samson strong? And maybe you don't know the story well, but throughout the story, we see moment after moment where this phrase is repeated time after time. And if we we first see it here in Judges 14, 6, and it says this, then the spirit of the Lord rushed upon him. The spirit of the Lord rushed upon him. See, Samson's strength didn't come from going to the gym. It didn't come from having a great bench press or squat, what it came from was God. And in fact, Samson's strength didn't even come from his hair. And I think for a lot of us in the room maybe today or watching online, that makes us feel a lot better because the hair on our heads is slowly fading away. And we got to know our strength is not, even his strength wasn't in his hair. And I think those of us who've been in church for so long, the way we've understood this story is that when he got his haircut is when his strength was lost. But in fact, it was a lifelong journey for his strength to disappear. And, and, and the strength that, 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 that he had from God, that the Spirit gave him, the beautiful part about this strength is that we have access to the same strength that Samson had. And how do I know this is because in Acts chapter 1 verse 8, this is what Jesus says. He says this, but you will receive what? Power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. It says that the Spirit of the Lord came powerfully upon Samson. But here Jesus is saying that same spirit of power, of strength, we have the same access when we give our lives to Jesus, when we're baptized and we are filled with the Holy Spirit. We have the same power. See, Samson was an incredibly strong man. In fact, no one in scripture really is described as stronger than Samson. And I think that a lot of us, maybe we couldn't argue that there was no one in scripture described as having such low spiritual strength than Samson. Having uh, having more or less self-control than Samson. In fact, Inside, Samson may have looked more like this. Right? You don't know who that is. That's Captain America before he went on steroids. I think inside Samson, he was an incredibly strong man on the outside, but on the inside, he was incredibly weak. He was absolutely incredibly, incredibly weak. And if you remember, again, just to recap, Samson as we shared last week, that the Samson did what was called the Nazarite vow, which people would do either for their life or for a season in Scripture. And people still do this today, where they commit this covenant vow, this Nazarite vow to God to not drink alcohol, to not touch dead things, and to not cut his hair. And we see all of these things in Samson's life. We don't know the full context of it, but he opened himself up to all of these things throughout his journey. 
See, what, what caused Samson to lose his strength was not his hair, but a loss of self-control. So many times throughout this story, we, we see him deny this vow he made, right? To not drink, to not touch dead things, to not cut his hair. And he goes against his commitment. See, Samson is an incredibly strong man who had surprisingly weak self-control. Now the question is, have you ever met a man like that? Have you ever met a woman like that who is incredibly strong, maybe even powerful on the outside, but on the inside, incredibly weak? They might lead this incredible business, but when they go home, they have a hard time sometimes even just spending time or, 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 or actually leading their families. Or guys who, who have this incredible marriage on the outside, but on the inside, they're struggling deeply with sexual sin. How do we know people? And maybe, maybe you look inside like, yeah, I, I can see that. I'm, I might, the appearance on the outside is strength, but on the inside, I'm incredibly, incredibly weak. See, the strongest people on earth will become weak without self-control. And what makes strong people weak? What, like, what is it that makes the strongest among us weak? What, make, what does this happen? And we're going to take the next few moments to, together to go through the story. We did the same story last week. And I never, in my almost 10 years of ministry, preached the same story two weeks in a row. It's never happened before. This is the first time. But there's so much more in the story than we even got to last week. But what makes strong people weak? In Judges chapter 14, verse 1 to 2, that's where we are again. It says this, Samson went down to Timnah, and at Timnah he saw one of the daughters of the Philistines. Then he came up and told his father and mother, I saw one of the daughters of the Philistines in Timnah. Now get her for me as my wife. See, Samson, he had some attitudes. He had three attitudes that I see in this story that made him weak. And I think not only did Samson have these attitudes, I think that a lot of us have the same attitudes. And number one is this, is I want it. You know what this is in our lives? This is lust. I want it. I want it. I want it, so what am I going to do? I'm going to go get it. See, Samson saw. And how many times you know the struggle on the inside with self-control, it starts with what we see. Right? We see something. He's like, I see her, and I want her. I want her. Now get her from me. This is when we see a shift. In this verse, we see so many things happen. It says, get her for me as my wife. And if you remember the story, one thing that he says is he says, she's right in my eyes. I see her as right in my eyes. We see this, Samson say this, but I don't know if you know this, but the last verse of Judges, this is what it says. In those days, there was no king in Israel. This is Judges 21, 25. And everyone did what was right in his own eyes. So Samson says, get her for me. She's right in my eyes. And then at the very end of Judges, we see that repeated, that everyone did what was right in his own eyes. This is our culture. Right? This is what we see in our world. This is what we see, that everyone, people are doing what they see is right in their own eyes. We see it everywhere. You know, Pastor John MacArthur, this is what he says. said, the idea that everyone should get to define for himself what is right and true is a recipe for disorder and disaster. However, it's so easy for us to point fingers that you're doing what's right in your eyes. They're doing what's right in their eyes. They're doing it. Look inside. So easy to point fingers, but let's take a moment to look internally when it comes to this. Have you ever seen something or seen someone that you knew wasn't right? It wasn't right in God's eyes. It wasn't right in the eyes of those around you. But you went after it and got it anyways. You knew it was wrong. You knew you shouldn't do it. That something or that someone or those images and you pursued it even though you knew it was wrong. It was right in your eyes so you went and you got it. It wasn't right in God's eyes. It wasn't right in the eyes of those around you. But it was right in your eyes. So you did it and you got it anyways. And you know, Ashley Wooldridge, who's the pastor of Christ Church of the Valley in Phoenix, Arizona, says this. What if what you feel today leads you to do something you regret tomorrow? 
you feel today leads you to do something you regret tomorrow. Have you ever had a moment like that? Where you gave in? Where the temptation was so strong and you saw it and you wanted it so you got it? Ever had a moment like that? I think we all have moments we can look back on. Things that we look back on and we regret because we wanted it so badly, so we did it. And now some of us would do, we would do anything we could to change it. To go back and change it, to, to not give in, to not just say, I want it and go get it. We all have moments like that. That's the first attitude that, that Samson had. He said, I want it. It's right in my eyes. So I'm going to go get it. And then in Judges 14, 5 to 6, then Samson went down with his father and mother to Timnah. And they came to the vineyards of Timnah. And behold, the young lion came roaring towards him. And we see this right here, verse 6. Then the Spirit of the Lord rushed upon him. And although he had nothing in his hand, he tore the lion in pieces as one tears a young goat. Now, the next part of this story is so peculiar to me. Because he says, but they say, but he did not tell his father or mother what he had done. This shocks me. Why this shocks me is because if I had ripped a lion in pieces, I would probably be telling people about it. I'm walking down the road. A lion comes roaring towards me. I'm going to protect my family. So I caught it by the jaw and I ripped it in half. I'm gonna, that's going on my social media. You know what I mean? Like I'm not like out here not telling people. He doesn't tell anybody. Like I'm telling you, if this was me, every Sunday I'm preaching this story. Right? It reminds me of the one time I ripped a lion in pieces. <laughs> He doesn't tell anybody about it. I would have told somebody. And then in, in verse 7, the next verse is this. Samson went down and talked with the woman, and she was right in Samson's eyes. There it is. And after some days, he returned to take her. And this next part is where a lot of us get into trouble. And he turned aside. He turned aside. How many times are we going and we're walking and we're going, and then something catches our eye and we turn aside and we see it? We, we turn aside. We know the path. We know, but we turn aside to go get it. He turns aside and sees the carcass of the lion. And behold, there's a swarm of bees in the body of the lion. And honey, he scraped it out into his hands and went on eating as he went. And he came to his father and mother and he gave some to them and they ate. But he did not tell them that he had scraped the honey from the carcass of the lion. You know what the next attitude that we have that, that, that causes a lot of problems in our life is this is I deserve it. This is entitlement in our life. See what happens is he's walking and he, he turns aside and he sees this line. He goes, remember I did that. I took that line out and guess what? There's my reward. Some honey. He turns aside and like we do and he, he, he knows where he's supposed to be going but he turns aside and sees the lion. He goes and he sees it, and this is what happens. We turn aside, and what do we see? We see something sweet. We see something shiny. We see something that catches our eye, and, we're, and we just pursue it. We're always looking for something sweet, something that'll make us feel good, something that'll make us feel better about our situation. And, and when we're struggling, and we're, we're struggling with our anxiety or with our stress, we, we have something we go to because that's what helps us feel better. I deserve it. My day today was so hard. He sees the lion and it goes against his vow for a handful of honey. The same God who just verses earlier that rushed upon him and he was able to defeat the lion. That same God, he actually goes against his vow for a little bit of honey. How could Samson be so stupid? I think we ask this question. Why does he do this? How could he do this? I think we all know, most of us, a lot of us, we do the same thing almost every day. It's just a look. It's just some pictures. It's just a video. It's just a Facebook message. It's just a one-night stand. It's just debt. It's just a book. It's just lunch. I'm just going to look. I'm not going to touch. I'm not harming anyone. You ever had those thoughts rolling through your mind? For a scoop of honey, 
we often give up everything that is good in our lives for a scoop of honey. I deserve it. I worked hard today. I've had a good quarter. She's not meeting my needs right now. But I want it. I deserve it. I deserve a new one. I I deserve something newer. I deserve something shinier. And this is the very next verse. And we often skip this part. Judges 14.10 says this. His father went down with the woman to to the woman and Samson prepared a feast there for the young, for so the young men used to do. Now we often skip this verse, but what's interesting is when you research this word feast here, it's the Hebrew word mishde, which is a banquet that's literally dedicated to drinking alcohol. This is this feast that he's preparing as they used to do in the day. He holds a bachelor party for himself with lots of alcohol. He says, boys, bring the kegs, let's go. For real. Why would a man who committed to not drink alcohol hold a party like this? Right? Why? You don't want to know why? I think this is the next attitude is this. We say this, I can handle it. I got it. It's pride. I got it. I can handle it. I'm strong. I'm a man. I can handle it. It won't be a problem. No one will know. But what he thought he could handle ends up handling him if you read through the whole story. I think it's the same for us. Again, it's only lunch. My wife won't know. It's not harming her. I can handle it. It's only pornography. I can handle it. I'm not addicted. Not me. It's only 15 beers once in a while. I can handle it. I know all my friends complain about their husbands when they get together, but I won't get involved. I can handle it. I can handle it. I can handle it. I'm just going to sit in the parking lot of McDonald's and smell it, I swear. That's where I get in trouble, right? I can handle it. No, I can't. The fry smells like no chance, you know? Something sweet. I can handle it. The, uh, this attitude, and again, I think we see ourselves in some of these attitudes, right? I want it. I deserve it. I can handle it. Now, I don't want us to leave guilty today because when I was prepping this message, I was like, man, I'm an old bag of bones, you know? <laughs> like, go back to the dust where I came from, like for real. How broken and I look at myself and I see, but I don't want us to leave guilty today. Because I know that we all can at moments in our lives see ourselves in these attitudes. Maybe you can see yourself in these attitudes now. But I want to tell you the good news that we have a God who specializes in making weak people strong. We have a God who's full of grace and full of love that even when we mess up, he's still there. Even when our attitude is, I want it and we go get it, he's still there loving you every single day, every single moment. So what do we do if we see these attitudes in our life? What do you do when you you see this in front of you, when you look in the mirror, you see I want it and I always am getting the things I want even though I know I shouldn't and, and I think I deserve it. What do we do? We need to have an attitude shift. I want to go through three attitudes that make weak people strong. Again, the attitudes that we have that make strong people weak is number one, I want it. Number two, I deserve it and I can handle it. Lust, entitlement, and pride. But I want to go through three things that make weak people strong. And number one is this, I am weak and I need God. The strongest people that I know, the strongest people of faith that I know, they can say this without shame. I am weak and I need God. It's transparency. You know what I think? I think the church, I think our families, I think our city, I think our country needs more people who are willing to admit, and I think especially men, to say I am weak and I need God. I think we need fathers who are willing to say I'm weak and I need God. God, to be transparent about it all, 
to say, I'm not as strong as I think I am. I am weak and I need God. And I think that unless we are, we are able to admit we are weak and we need God, we're never going to actually be strong for our families. We're never going to be strong for our businesses. Ephesians 6, 10 says this, finally, be strong in yourself. It says in the Lord. Everyone's just staring. No, it doesn't. You know, like, like learn how to read. You know. Be strong in the Lord and in his strength. Nope. Be strong in the Lord and in the strength of his might is what I'm trying to say. Be strong in the Lord and in the strength of his might, not your own. Whose strength? It's not ours, it's his. His strength and his might. Next attitude is this, I deserve nothing. This is humility. Now you say that, y'all like, whoa. I deserve it. He's not meeting my needs. I've been working hard. I deserve the new phone. I deserve the PlayStation 5. I deserve it. I deserve to watch pornography. I deserve to spend this money without my husband knowing. I deserve it. I know how hard I've worked. You know, the truth is, and I can say this from a, from a heart, is I deserve nothing. This is what Romans says, if we need it to be more clear. For the wages of sin is what? Death. That's what we deserve. But the free gift, that's where it doesn't end at, we deserve death, the wages of sin is death. It says, but the free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. You know what we deserve is the death and punishment that Jesus took on the cross. That's what I deserve. God owes us nothing. He owes us nothing. We're thinking we're the ones making it happen. We're the ones holding everyone up. And you know what? That's pride. Proverbs 16, 18 says this, pride goes before destruction and a haughty spirit before a fall. Pride leads us to destruction and to a fall. Samson experienced it. I deserve it. And maybe you've experienced the same thing. We have to rid ourselves of pride and realize everything that we have is a gift from God. Everything. This is how we can become strong. Is when we are fully dependent on our Savior, our Lord. And this is the last attitude that I think, I think is the most important. And it's this, is that I can fall to any sin. This is vulnerability. Now, I can stand up here as your pastor and say the exact same thing. I can fall to any sin. Have you noticed this? How many pastors right now are falling? How many fast pastors are cheating on their spouses? I'm on a social media, on Facebook, I'm on a group that's like this youth pastors group and you can post anonymously and this guy said, hey, my, my wife's been cheating on me and I need, I need prayer. We see pastors who this is happening to and it's not just pastors. We're seeing CEOs and fathers and business leaders. But we can't say this. I can fall to any sin. I can handle it. Right? I can handle the, the workload. I can handle it's just a few clicks on my computer. I can handle the salesman. I can handle Amazon Prime days. I can handle it. I'm just going to look. I'm just going to take a peek. I think we need more men and women to realize this. And I think, to be honest, I think for a lot of us as men, we need to be able to say this. And it's hard. I think as fathers, as business owners, as pastors, as parents, we, we want to be strong for our kids, right? We want to be strong for our spouses. We want to be strong for our employees. We want to be strong for our congregations. We want to be strong. But again, we look in the mirror and what do we see? We see weakness. And, and I want to tell you something, that without God, I'm the weakest man in the room. Without him, I can fall to sin at any time. You know how quick it can happen? Just like Samson, he's walking, 
He turns aside, sees the lion, let me go take a look, breaks his vow. I remember being in Thailand when I was with YWAM. We were working with uh, Youth with a Mission. We were working with, we were in a red light district in Phuket. And my heart was, I was angry, as I think we, we ought to be when we see human beings being sold. We ought to be angry. I was angry. People were being sold all around me and we were praying. And, but the thing that had caught my attention and caught my eye is I was at the time I was 19 years old. And as I was walking, I was seeing people my age buying people my age, 19, 20 year olds, there for a party. Probably didn't plan to go and have this happen, but it just happened. It came up and walking around with, with girls. And I remember thinking, how could this happen to them? And then I'm thinking, if it could happen to them, it could happen to me. We have to guard ourselves and be brutally honest. 1 Corinthians 10, 12 to 13 says this, Therefore, let anyone who thinks that he stands take heed lest he fall. No temptation has overtaken you that is not common to man. God is faithful. And he will not let you be tempted beyond your ability. But with the temptation, he will also provide the way of escape and you will be able to endure it. When you think you can stand, you need to realize that you're on the verge of falling. It's oftentimes when we're the most confident, when we're the most prideful, most entitled, that's when the fall is coming. Ashley Wooldridge, again, the pastor of that church in Phoenix, says this, the strongest people aren't the ones with the most power, but the ones with the most restraint. The strongest people aren't the ones with the most power, but the ones with the most restraint. I think that's so true in our lives that it's not about power. It's about self-control. See, these, these attitudes that we're going through, they will always make us strong. They will always make us weak. And if we go back to those attitudes... You know, number one is I want it. I deserve it. I can handle it. These attitudes will always make the strongest people weak. And I think all of us, we've either lived this out or we've been very impacted by these attitudes. I want it. So I'm going to get it. Go get her for me. I deserve it. I can handle it. But if we want to become strong, again, this is the bad news, but the good news is this isn't the end of the story, right? Like this isn't where it ends. It's like we got to do something about it. When we look in the mirror and we see these attitudes, what do we do? Well, we got to become strong. We got to become strong for our city. We got to become strong for our family. We got to become strong. And I think our attitude and our heart has to be whatever it takes. If that means setting up accountability, if that means setting up parameters, do it. You know, $12 or $5, whatever, for an app on your phone to save your marriage is worth it. It's worth it. Having somebody help you make decisions in your life is worth it. It's worth it. We gotta have the attitude that says, I am weak and I need God. I'm weak. And we think about that as like the sad thing. It's the best thing we can do to admit I'm weak. But some of us, we can't even say it out loud. We can't say it out loud, I'm weak, I can't say that. I just did some new personal records at the gym. Like I'm not weak. I'm weak and I need God. And we can't even, some of us, we can't even say I deserve nothing. We're like, no, I deserve a lot. 
And I think the last one, I think, is one of the ones that's the most important because it's such a vulnerable place to say, I can fall to any sin. And I think it's true. And oftentimes it's just for a scoop of honey. It might not seem wrong in a moment, right? Honey's not wrong. It's not like he was like, the honey like ruined everything. It's the whole process of it. I can fall to any sin. You know, my takeaway today is this, is my weak attitude is most often and I've left it blank. Let you have some space and some time to fill it out. What, what, what is it for you, you know? And oftentimes I think it's the hardest one to say out loud. It's the hardest one to say aloud. It's probably the one you struggle with the most. And then don't just end there. Then find the attitude that will make you strong to combat your weakness. Because in our weakness, he is strong. And I was really feeling this week about this, that this is like a desperate cry, I think, in North America in our churches and whatever is for weak men to be strong and weak women to be strong. That when we look in the mirror, we don't see our weakness anymore. We see his strength. We see his grace. We see his love. We see his joy. Find the attitude that will make us strong in our weakness. And before I, I pray today, I want to let say like, hey, as a church, as a family, we're praying for you. We love you. You don't have to be afraid to ask for prayer. You don't need to be afraid to ask to meet me for coffee. You don't have to be afraid to share some of the things you're struggling with. You don't have to be afraid. Our, my job is to love you and hopefully lead us to be healthy followers of Jesus. I want to encourage if you, if you need prayer, if you need to talk, if you need to meet, if you need help because you're struggling with addiction, if you need help, we'll do our best to help you. Because I want to see you strong. I want to see our church strong. That when people are looking, you know, where are the strong men at in Edmonton? They know where to come. Where are the strong women at? They're going to come. Because why? Because we are weak and I, we need God. It's the gospel. We're weak and we need God. So, Father, I thank you. God, I thank you that you are so great and you are so strong. And God, I pray that all of us today will have a moment to reflect and know some of the attitudes we have in our lives that are causing us to be weak. That we might look big and strong on the outside, but on the inside we're deeply struggling. God, help us realize our desperate need for you. Help us realize that we don't deserve anything, but yet you still pour out love and grace and joy into our lives. And help us realize that we can fall to any sin. So help us set up parameters to protect our marriages to protect our businesses, to protect our relationships. Help us be strong. In Jesus' name, amen.